بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> So uh, brothers uh, we reached here the third point as you can see is in Arabic numerals the third point here and um, we're going through the part of the book um, which is actually the section that's called the three fundamental principles the um, the same as uh, the title of the book so initially if you remember we went through a lot of basics very very basic things um, and introductions up until we reached this point so the third uh, point here that the sheikh says and he says so, so the sheikh was explaining this book quotes the original author and he quotes what he says he says wahua ma'budi and that means that and it and he is my deity that i worship so uh, we're going through those series of questions um, regarding the three fundamental principles so who is your lord um what is your religion who is your prophet those three questions the three fundamental principles based on those three questions and the, and those are the three questions that we will be asked in the grave as we went through in the previous lessons uh, when we started this new section. Um, so just to help you understand where we're following on from. So he says, and what we should, in the situation where you uh, where asked about Allah, he say, Wa huwa ma'budi. He is uh, my deity, my Lord, as in uh, in terms of worship, that I worship Allah. So then the Shaykh continues and he, he explains this away to us. He says, الرَّبُّ الَّذِي هَذَا شَأْنُهُ هُوَ الَّذِي يَسْتَحِقُّ الْإِبَادَةَ مِنِّي وَمِنْ غَيْرِي ثُمَّ عَيْضًا نَبَّهَا الشَّيْخُ نَبَّهَا الشَّيْخُ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا يَكْفِي الْإِقْرَارَ بِالْرُّبُوبِيَةِ وَلَا يَكْفِي أَنْ تَقُولْ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ أَلَّذِي رَبَّانِي بِنِعْمِهِ So then the Shaykh says, he says, the Lord, he is the Lord who um, he who is deserved of all worship from me and from other than me. And then also the Sheikh pointed our attention to uh, that, that the, the fact that um, it's not sufficient just to affirm uh, Allah's Lordship. So just to affirm his Lordship. And he says, uh, and it's not sufficient that you say, um, my Lord is Allah who um, has taken care of me and uh, nourished me and nurtured me w by way of his blessings. That's not sufficient. The Shaykh will explain why he isn't in the next paragraphs. So the Shaykh continues and he says, هَذَا لَا يَكْفِي لَا بُدَّ أَن تَعْتَرِفَ لَهُ بِالْعُبُودِيَّةِ وَأَن تُخْلِسَ لَهُ بِالْعِبَادَةِ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْفَرْقِ مَا بَيْنَ الْمُوَحِدِ المواحد والمشرك فالمواحد يقر بربوبية الله عز وجل وبعبودة وبعبوديته وحده لا شريك له والمشرك يقر بربوبية الله ولكنه مشرك في عبادته يشرك معه غيره في عبادته يشرك معه من لا من لا يخلق ولا يرزق ولا يملك شيئا هذا هو الفرق ما بين الموحد والمشرك الموحد يقول ربي الله وهو معبودي وليس لي معبود سواه أما المشرك فيقول ربي الله لكن, ال... لكن الإبادة عنده ليست خاصة أو ليست خاصة, خاصة بالله فيعبد مع الله الأشجار والأحجار, والأحجار والأولياء والصالحين والقبور فلذلك صار مشركا ولم, ين ولم ينفعه 
الاقرار بربوبيه ولم يدخله في الاسلام so the sheikh explains the previous paragraph with this one so he says that this isn't sufficient and therefore it's it's important and it's incumbent that um you uh you testify or you you make clear uh um that uh that you know Allah that you worship Allah and and it's not just lordship on its own but it's in worship as well and that you um um make your worship sincerely for him alone as we mentioned previously as well and he says and this is the difference between the person who's upon tawhid and the one who's upon shirk uh, so the sheikh says the person who's upon tawhid he tawhid he testifies and affirms uh, uh, the uh, uh, the um, worship of allah that is for him alone and uh, also uh, that he affirms his lordship as well right so he affirms the lordship that lordship is for allah and lordship of allah and also at the same time he affirms that all worship is uh, allah deserves all worship and that all of it is directed to him and nothing else on the contrast on the flip side of that uh, the mushrik the one who uh, is upon shirk then he testifies he testifies that uh, the, uh, uh, the the lordship of allah and he accepts and affirms the lordship of allah however he is upon shirk and polytheism in terms of worship why because he is associating partners in worship with allah so he'll be worshiping allah but then also sharing his worship with and directing it to other than allah as well which makes him a mushrik a polytheist and he shares his worship uh, with other than allah and directs it towards other than allah to those who cannot create anything they're not from the they obviously they don't have they're not possible it's not possible for them to create anything they can't provide anything to anybody you know they don't in actual reality don't um you know own a thing or able to do a thing and and the sheikh says this is the difference the difference between the person who is upon upon tawhid and monotheism and the person who is upon shirk and polytheism that's the difference between the two so then the sheikh says what does the person upon monotheism the muwahhid upon tawhid what does he say he says allah is my lord and he is uh, uh, who i worship uh, and he and he says also that there isn't uh, a deity besides him he is the only one that worship is directed towards on the contrast to that the, the mushrik the polytheist he says Allah is my lord however worship isn't specifically for Allah so because of that he this polytheist he worships Allah and then along and besides Allah as well alongside that worshiping Allah he also worships the trees the stones uh, the awliya the you know the righteous ones um uh, the graves and other than that as we've discussed previously as the sheikh mentioned it to us previously in the other parts of this book that we've we've, that we've read the chapters that we've read so then the sheikh says and for this reason then and so um uh, the uh, the polytheist uh doesn't benefit from his affirmation of the lordship of for allah and doesn't enter him into islam why because like we mentioned before what the sheikh mentioned to us do you remember he said that um there has to be affirmation and there has to be negation and that is la ilaha illallah as the sheikh mentioned before if you remember from previous lessons the meaning of la ilaha illallah in it is affirmation and negation right and then just take us back to history as well at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the uh, the pagans of makkah for example just as one example a uh, easy one for us to uh, relate to uh, that they affirmed the lordship of allah but it did not enter them into islam why because they affirmed lordship of allah but they negated but they, there was no negation of worshiping other than allah they didn't they still shared their worship with other, other than allah therefore they could they can't enter islam why because you have to affirm that 
uh, that Allah, that there's no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah alone, right? Um, and with that, when you say that, you've got an affirmation and you've got the negation that anything else besides Allah doesn't is not worshipped. You do not worship. And so there's a clear separation, yeah? Then the Shaykh continues and he says, um, uh, و... He says فَقَوْلُهُ وَهُوَ مَعْبُودِ أي الْإِلَاءَ الَّذِي يَعْبُدُهُ So then he goes back to what he mentioned earlier and he says uh, and he is the one I worship as in he is the only deity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only deity that I worship So the shirk continues and he says وَقَوْلُهُ لَيْسَ لِي, مع... ليس لي مَعْبُودٌ سِوَاهُ لَا مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَلَا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وَلَا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَا مِنَ الْأَشْجَارِ وَالْأَحْجَارِ ولا من أي شيء ليس لي معبود سواه سبحانه وتعالى هذا تقرير هذا تقرير التوحيد بالدليل وهذا دليل أقلي ثم ذكر الدليل النقلي من القرآن. <coughs> so then the Sheikh says he quotes the next part of that because he's explaining it sentence by sentence. He says uh, he quotes the original text and he says and I do not and so it's like a question and answer approach. And then you say, I do not have, I don't have uh, another deity that I worship except him. So here you are negating all other deities, all other things that could be worshipped. No, you're saying, I don't have any other deity. I have, it's just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I worship and I direct all my worship towards him. So then the Sheikh says, for example, um, uh, so therefore there isn't any other deity for, for, and he gives examples that w what people do worship from the angels, for example, from the messengers, from the righteous ones, from the trees, from the stones, and anything else that people worship besides Allah. And, and that clarifies that. And so therefore, the Sheikh says that this is, is a testification and affirmation of uh, monotheism with the evidence. And he says, this evidence that we're looking at at the moment and we're going through now, discussing now, is evidence that we get from our intellect. It's understandable. It makes sense. Um, and then the Sheikh says, the original author then mentions the evidence that that is called Naqli, which is evidence that is from the Quran. And so he mentions this and he says, What the qawluhu ta'ala, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And that's from Surah Al-Fatiha, and we all know that. So if we look at the translation, uh, uh, let's just have a look at the translation. And we'll just read it from the translation ourselves. And we know what that means. So it's all the praise and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns, and all that exists. Right? And that's the evidence. So the Sheikh will go through it in more detail. There's the bottom of the page here. So the Sheikh continues and he says, هذه الآية هي أول القرآن في المصحف ليس قبل قبلها إلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهي آخر وهي آخر كلام أهل الجنة قال تعالى وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والله جل وعلا افتتح بها الخلق قال تعالى الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وختم بها الخلق قال تعالى وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين فتح بها الخلق وختم بها فهي كلمة نذيمة So then we'll just stop at that paragraph there. So then the Sheikh says that this ayah that we just read from the Quran الحمد لله رب العالمين it is the first of what's mentioned in, in the Mus'haf, in the Qur'an. And, and before this particular verse, there isn't anything except the mentioning of Allah's name, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And also this Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it is also the last speech of, it's the last thing that Ahlul Jannah, it's the last thing that the people of Jannah will say. And, and then we read the ayah from uh, Surah to Yunus. So let's go there and, and read that translation of that. It is verse 10. Yeah, let's read verse 10 first and then, and then we'll read the rest. 
the way of request adding will be Subhanak Allahumma glory to you O Allah and salam peace safe from each and every evil will be their greetings there in paradise and the close of their request here's what we need to be looking at and the close the close of their request or the closing request will be Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen all the praises and thanks be to, uh, are to Allah the Lord of Alameen mankind jinns and all that exists so then the next ayah that the Shaykh uh, quoted as well and cited was from Surah Al-An'am and that was verse 1. All praises and thanks be to Allah who alone created the heavens and the earth and originated the darkness and the light. Yet those who disbelieve hold others as equal with their Lord. And then the Shaykh says, and so that's like what, what uh, uh, he quotes, this particular ayah we just read there is uh, uh, what's mentioned. And then also uh, what's uh, concluded as well is another ayah which we read here from Surah Al-Zumar. And uh, let's go to Surah Al-Zumar now and, and read the whole ayah. And you will see the angels surrounding the throne of Allah from all around, glorifying the praises of their Lord Allah. And they, all the creatures will be judged with truth. And it will be said, and this is what we need to be focusing on here, the last part of this ayah. And, and it will be said, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns, and all that exists. And so the Sheikh says that it's it, it began in the Mus'haf in the Quran, it, it, it began with this phrase, uh, and also the last speech or the last thing that the people of Jannah will say, is is the same thing, and so this points uh, points towards or leads us to uh, it leads us to saying that this is a is a is a magnificent and great word or sentence or what's being said. It holds a lot of weight. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Faqaluhu taala alhamd, athana ala almahmud ma amhabati wajlalihi wa al fil hamd lil istigraq." أي جميع المحامد لله ملكا واستحقاقا فهو المستحق للحمد المطلق وأما غيره فيحمد على قدر ما يفعل من الجميل ومن الخير وأما الحمد المطلق الكامل فهو لله يز وجل لأن النعم كلها منه. so um the the sheikh is explaining here what the word alhamd means. what does all all praise means. so what what does it mean alhamd with the word al attached to the word hamd alhamd and he says, this is a praise upon um, uh, the one who's being... So it's, it's a praise. The, uh, it's a praise to the one who's being praised. Yeah? You might see the sound a bit confusing, but it'll be cl- clarified in a minute. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a giving praise uh, or a praise upon the one who's being praised. Or the praise or that actual fi- uh, um, verb falls upon. So praise falls upon that particular particular thing. Right? And it is with uh, love and, and glorification. Right, so and then the Sheikh says, "What does Al mean in Alhamd?" So that uh, prefix Al, what does it mean? He says it's it's to do with it's specifying that all of the praise, right? All of the praise is all praise, all of it, every every little bit, all of it. It's all of it, all encompass, and it's all of the praise. It belongs to Allah. Yeah. From that which he owns and and is deserved of all uh, uh, praise, in an absolute sense, absolute unrestricted sense. For and then the Sheikh mentions in a contrast to that he says, and other uh, uh, as for other than Allah, then you know if somebody does something uh, uh, beautiful, does good actions from you know khair and things like that, then obviously depending on what he's done you know he's praised for that but it's not the same praise as that what allah deserves and what allah is befitting for allah which is unrestricted praise for allah alone all of it yeah so that's the difference why and why is it uh, unrestricted for allah and all of it is for allah in that sense because all of the blessings and virtues and all these things where did they come from they originate from Allah and that's why he deserves that uh, praise unrestrictedly in the absolute sense. So let's continue. <clears throat> then the shaykh continues and he says, وَحَتَّ الْمَخْلُوقِ 
وحتى المخلوق إذا أسدى إليك شيئا من الإحسان فإنه من الله عز وجل هو الذي سخر لك هذا المخلوق وهو الذي مكنه من أن يحسن أن يحسن إليك فالحمد يرجع إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh gives us a different example as well that's connected here to what we're discussing and he says he says uh, and he goes uh, even to the point of the creation. So he says if somebody uh, came forward and you know um, and uh, gave you something or did something for you uh, from goodness uh, 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 from goodness and uh, performed a good action right uh, the sheikh says indeed it is from allah azawajal and then he explains he says um, indeed it is from allah azawajal uh, he is the one who uh, allowed this makhluk this creation this person to do that good to you if it wasn't for him it wouldn't happen and he's the one who allowed this person to you know have that ihsan and that isaniyat with you and you know have that good attitude and did a good thing for you so therefore all of the praise unrestrictedly all this praise that's why all praise it returns to Allah its starting point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the shaykh continues and he says wa qawluhu lillah so there's some grammar here so we won't really it, it's difficult for me anyway somebody else may be able to explain in english better but um I'm going to have some difficulty explaining this in English. Um, but uh, he goes through, um, uh, the Sheikh mentions Lilla and then he goes through the uh, the uh, Arabic grammar. But anyway, we can take the meaning from it. And the Sheikh says, Ma'anahu dhul uluhiyya wal ubudiyya. Sorry, skipping that bit there. Um, uh, we'll just take the meaning that uh, Lilla means uh, that all, everything it all belongs to Allah. Right? It all belongs to Allah. And uh, what we're referring to? Alhamdulillah. So that Alhamd, it belongs to all of it, belongs to Allah. And we've explained it, uh, the Sheikh explained it for us in the previous paragraph. There's just some grammar here. So and anybody who doesn't know Arabic who's listening to this, this is another reason why you should be encouraged to learn the Arabic language so you can understand the, these, uh, these bits here, which you really won't understand. Even if somebody explains it to you in English, just, it's just be tough to understand that. Anyway, the Shaykh continues and he says, Wallah. So he says, Ma'anahu dhul uluhiyyati wal ubudiyyati ala khalkihi ajma'in. Wa hadha al-ismu la yusamma bihi ghayruhu subhana. La ahad, la ahada tusamma billah. Hatta fir'aun ma qal, anna Allah. Lakinahu qala, ana rabbukum. Fa hadha al-ism khas billah. لا أحد يتسمى به أو يتسمى به أبدا ولا أحد ولا أحد يجرؤ أن يقول أن الله. so then the sheikh breaks down the word Allah and he says and and Allah so Allah and he says and the meaning of Allah is uh, the one uh, who, who deserves or is a possessor and is deserved of all worship, right? of all worship the one true deity deserved of all worship um, um uh, and um and that all of his creation worship him right and then the sheikh says and he says that this um noun allah the word this word it's it's not uh, it's he it says here nobody else is called or named with allah so you won't find anybody who's named with Allah and 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 it and does not is not deserved of that. No person, nobody is uh, named with the word Allah. He goes even Firaun, and we know the story of Firaun. He's a very, very arrogant person, um, extremely arrogant. Hatta he says Hatta Firaun who said, and even Firaun who said, he he said the Sheikh says he didn't say I am Allah. But he said, I am your Lord. So even he didn't say and choose that word and say, I am Allah, because no, he's not. Uh, but he said, I am your Lord. So the Sheikh says, this this word, this noun is specific to Allah only. Nobody calls themselves or names themselves and says, oh, I am Allah. Um, um, 
so the Sheikh just uh, concludes with that there in that paragraph. He continues. So he mentions the next word. So we're just breaking down all the words to help us understand. Uh, the Sheikh says, Rabbun, Na'at, Lismil Jalala, wa huwa Majroor, wa huwa Mudaf. So uh, the Sheikh says here that it's a uh, Rabb, it is a, it's a description. It's, it's a description. It's a descriptive noun. I think that's the right word to use in English. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, correct me. Um, it's a descriptive uh, uh, noun. Or, so we say ad adjective. Adjective, that's right. It's an adjective. Rab, yeah. So, um, and then uh, the, the next word is al alamin, and the Sheikh says that um, um, he mentions some um, grammar here, al alamin. But we know that al alamin is all from creation, all that exists, jinn, mankind, and all that exists, as we mentioned, as we read from the Quran translation about Alhamdulillahi Rabbil al alamin. Yeah, al alamin. So that's we all know what that means. Now uh, it's it's all, it's jinn, mankind, and all that exists, right? There's some grammar there, we we're going to go through that. So the Shaykh continues and says, فَوَاضِحٌ أَنَّ الْحَمْدَ كُلَّهُ وَثَنَاءَ كُلَّهُ لِلَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَعَالَمَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَعَالَمَ الْجَمَادَاتِ وَالطُّيُورِ وَعَالَمَ السِّبَاعِ وَعَالَمَ الْحَيَوَانَاتِ وَعَالَمَ الْحَشَرَاتِ وَالْدِرْ عوالم في البر والبحر لا يعلمها إلا الله ولا يحصيها إلا الله كل كلها الله ربها الله ربها. so Allah is its Lord. okay so the Sheikh saying here in the next paragraph he says so the world of the angels and the world of things that don't move so like the stones the uh, the, the the you know the things that don't move that don't have life like that and and the birds and the and the world of the predators for example and the world of the animals and give them different examples and the world of the insects and spiders and um other smaller insects like ants and things like this and the world of uh, uh, and the creation that lives on the land and the, the lives in the sea nobody knows it except allah and nobody can uh let's say satisfy it or to enumerate it except Allah. Allah knows exactly what's there and knows everything. And all of it, Allah is the Lord of everything. Then the word the Shaykh mentions, Rabbul Alameen. And, and then he says here that this is a specific uh, to Allah, that Allah is the Lord of all that exists. And that it's not it's not possible to say and it's incorrect to say that somebody says like for example I say oh I'm the Rabbul Alameen it's not possible I'm not and nobody can say that but the Sheikh says here gives an example so he says that Allah is the Lord of everything and all that exists we know that and the Sheikh mentions here but he says the word Ar Rab uh, the Lord it says Fahad la yutlak illa al Allah so Ar Rab with the Alif Lam Al Ar Rab that's specific and only for Allah and that's it it's that's Allah's attribute that he's the Lord of everything that everything belongs to him he says however um, uh, uh, from the creation from our perspective you know if somebody said uh, he says in Arabic here Rabbul Dar Rabbul Bahima things like that then they you know where if somebody says I'm the Lord of the house or like for example you know landlord right? landlord Lord of the house landlord or uh, Lord of um um of of this apartment or lord of this la uh, this land patch of land over here or um lord of these animals then in that situation what's being meant here in that context is just that the person owns these things like as in you know you own a house you might own some cattle you know uh, you know a flock of this and the other and you know you might own some land in that context but the alif lam arab that's that's for Allah only. He is the Lord of everything. And that's Sheikh's making that distinction for us. So we reach point four now. So the Sheikh continues. He says, he says "ثم بين الشيخ رحمه الله وجه الاستدلال بهذه الآية فقوله وكل ما سوى الله سوى الله عالم وأن وأنا واحد من ذلك العالم فيكون فيكون الله ربي 
بأن الله رب العالمين وأنا واحد من العالمين فلا أحد يستطيع أن يقول أنا لي رب غير رب العالمين للكافر وللمسلم هذا لا يمكن أبدا ولا يقوله عاقل هذا دليل على ربوبية الله عز وجل وما دام أنه رب العالمين فهو المستح مستحق للإبادة وهذا يبطل إبادة غير سبحانه وتعالى ولذلك قال بعدها إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين So then the Shaykh, he says, and his piece is, uh, we're still going back to uh, the original author and breaking down each sentence bit by bit and the Shaykh is explaining it in that fashion. So he says, and his speech and what he said, he says, he says here, um, and all of that would is except Allah is from the alim, is from the world, is from the, uh, from the makhluk, you know, from what's been created, what Allah created. And then you say, if, when somebody's asking you, you, you reply, you say, I am one of those from the alam i'm one of those created and from the world right uh and and then you say my lord is allah because allah is the lord of all of the worlds everything all that exists mankind and all that exists mankind and jinn and all that exists and i am one from the alamin the creation from the world that's been created so the sheikh says so it's not possible for one to try and say uh, or even say that uh, that you know I, I I'm a lord uh, uh, I am a lord besides uh, the lord of the alamin it's not possible to say that not a kafir nor a muslim can say that it's not possible ever um, and a, a, an intelligent one will never say this a person who possesses intellect will never say this and the, and the sheikh says this is evidence uh, uh, around the uh, lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, so as long as, uh, so it says here, uh, and that Allah is a rub of, of, of all that exists, Allah is the lord of everything that exists, and that he is deserved of all worship. Um, and this therefore, when we look at this, this therefore nullifies the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and this is why uh, uh, Allah said after uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen or after that verse there's another verse then after that verse so just saying generally speaking that what came after Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen not directly after but what came after anyway is uh, the verse Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in you we worship and you um, uh, we seek aid from right um, then the Sheikh breaks this down. What does it mean? He says, وَهَذَا يُفِيدُ الْحَصَرْ لِأَنَّ تَقْدِيمُ الْمَعْمُولِ إِيَّاكَ وَتَأْخِيرَ الْعَامِلِ نَعْبُدُ يَدُلُ عَلَى الْحَصَرْ فَإِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ يَخْتَلِفْ عَنْ نَعْبُدُكْ عَنْ 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 نَعْبُدُكْ لِأَنَّ نَعْبُدْ نَعْبُدْ هَذَا إِثْبَاتْ فَقَدْ لَكِنْ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ يَتَضَمَّنْ النَّفِي وَالْإِثْبَاتْ أي لا نعبد غيرك ولا إبادتك وغيرك والعبادة لا تصح إلا مع النفي والإثبات وهو معنى لا إله إلا الله فيها نفي وإثبات نفي الألوهية عما سوى الله وإثباتها لله عز وجل So then the Sheikh breaks down what إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين means from a grammatical perspective and I, I think this here is, 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 is a brilliant explanation so uh, we'll get the benefits from this inshallah so the Sheikh mentions that this is uh, in Arabic. Uh, it's a constraint. It's it's the sentence is um, uh, being turned around. So the original sentence would be Na'budullah wa nasta'inu billah. So it would be um, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, what's happened is the sentence has changed. So what's being brought forward is iyaka. So you or oh Allah, as in Allah, you we worship. It's, it's, it constrains the meaning. Therefore, we rule out everything else. So we're saying only only you we worship. So when you see this in Arabic like this, uh, being said in this way, um, and the thing that was uh, um, the action is falling upon, as in the worship falls upon Allah, as in we worship Him, then that's being brought forward in the sentence, uh, which is the information, right, in the Arabic language. Then then when it's like this. 
is specific to Allah. In this situation, we're meaning Allah. So it's specific to Allah alone, which therefore negates anything else, automatically negates. And so remember, we were talking about affirmation and negation. This is the Shaykh mentions here. And this is the meaning of La ilaha illallah, that we affirm that all worship is for Allah and that Allah is deserved of all worship in truth and that anything else is not. So there's affirmation and negation. And that's why Allah said here, uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. This is why this is in the Quran here like this, because automatically this is tawheed, the tawheed of Allah. We specify the worship for Allah alone, and at the same time in this sentence, that's how powerful the sentence is in the grammar, is that at the same time you negate anything else as well from being worshipped, and that is true monotheism. And the Sheikh mentioned that that is the, la, the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Yeah, affirmation and negation, as we mentioned before in previous lessons as well, when the Sheikh had mentioned it. So let's continue. So then the Sheikh says, Anta kult Allahu Rabbi aw Rabbi Allah alladhi rabbani bin amihi ma huwa dalil ala anna Allah rabbuka alladhi rabbaka bin amihi. So then this is still taking the question and answer for So somebody will ask you, then you're saying all this. Somebody will come with a question and say, and you said that Allah, that you said that Allah is my Lord and that Allah, uh, uh, my Lord is Allah who uh, nurtured me and uh, nurtured me and uh, provided for me uh, with his blessings. And then the person will say, so you said all that. What is the, uh, what is the evidence that Allah is your Lord and that he is the Lord uh, and and and, uh, and that he um, um, nurtured you with his blessings. So the person may ask you that after these questions we're going through. And so the Sheikh says, "Ja a Sheikh who be adilati be adilatin min al wahi wa min al akli kama sayati fa ida kila lak bima rafta rabbak li anna man idda shay'an fala buda an yuki ma dalila an an yuki ma dalila dalila ala da'wahu." So then the Sheikh says. The, uh, the original shaykh, is, it comes with evidence from uh, the revelation from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and particularly the Qur'an, uh, and also from just your your intellect as well, uh, from both sides. And he'll, he'll explain this. Um, uh, and the shaykh says, as which will come uh, as we go through the text. Uh, so then the shaykh says, so if you were asked, so if you were asked, uh, uh, how do you know your Lord? How do you know your Lord? How did you come about knowing about your Lord? Uh, and the Sheikh says, because whoever claims something, so if you make a claim, then it's incumbent, incumbent and obligatory that you um, you um, establish the evidence upon your call and your claim. So you make a claim, you have to back it up with evidence. So the Sheikh continues, he says, وَالدَّعَوَىٰ إِذَا لَمْ يُقِيمُوا عَلَيْهَا uh, so there's just some um, um, uh, poetry there, line of poetry. That's just what the Sheikh said. So the Sheikh says, "La Buddha li kulli mudain an yuki madalila la dawahu wa illa kan dawahu ghair sahih ghair sahihatan ghair sahihatin." Anta qult Rabbi Allah alladhi rabbani wa rab wa rabb jami' al-'alamin bi ni'mihi madalil. فقل الدليل آياته ومخلوقاته الآيات جمع جمع آية والآية لغة العلام العلامة على الشيء والدلا والدلالة على الشيء كما قال سبحانه صلى الله عليه وسلم آية المنافق ثلاث أي علامته. So the Sheikh explains here. So whoever makes a claim, the one who's a claimant. And makes a claim, therefore, is upon the claimant to establish the evidence um, uh, upon what is mentioned, what is claimed, and what he's saying and calling to. Uh, except, uh, otherwise, then it's not going to be correct. His his call will not be correct because there's no evidence to back it up, authentic, correct evidence. Um, so uh, when this question said to the person, for example, you said that Allah is your Lord who uh, nurtured you and is the one who nurtures and takes care of all of the Allah, I mean, everything that exists from jinn, mankind, and all that exists with his, with his blessings. 
then you're going to be asked, what's, what is the dalil? What is the evidence? So the Sheikh says, and say that the, the evidence is his signs and his creation. Um, and the Sheikh says, Al Ayat, signs, is the plural of sign, Ayatun. So Ayatun, Al Ayatun, Al Ayatun. And the Sheikh says, in the in linguistically, Al well, Al Aya, a sign linguistically, it's a, 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 or the word Al Aya linguistically means a sign, uh, a sign upon a thing, or um, uh, uh, an, an evidence, or uh, what leads uh, to a thing, or a uh, or a sign of a thing. And then he explains it further. He says, "Kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So then he gives an example from what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, said in one of his uh, hadith, in one of the hadith, <clears throat> and we mentioned this said here, Ayatul Munafik Thalath, the sign of a Munafik, the sign, the sign of the hypocrite, are three, or the signs of the hypocrite are three, um, uh, and uh, that's from uh, Al Bukhari, which you can look at the references at the bottom of the the footer, uh, Al Bukhari thirty three. Muslim 59, you can see the rest of the ayah, uh, the hadith there. But you, you get the idea that <clears throat> what ayah means, it's a sign. Right? <clears throat> then the shaykh continues and he says, قَوْلُهُ بِآيَاتِهِ أَيْ الْعَلَامَاتِ وَالْدِلَالَاتِ الدَّالَةِ عَلَيْهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَلَىٰ فَجَمِعُ فَجَمِعُ هَذِهِ الْكَائِنَاتَ الَّتِي تَرَوْنَهَا كل, uh, uh, كُلُّهَا كَانَتْ معدومة ثم إن الله أوجدها وخلقها بقد بقدرته سبحانه وتعالى. So um, <clears throat> the Sheikh says here in terms of the signs so be ayatih by his signs as in by Allah signs or Allah the signs that is given us um, are those um, uh, signs uh, uh, which uh, lead us which show us the proofs right. From the uh, what exists, so for example, what we see, all of all of that we see, you know, on the planet around us, you know, all of, all of what we see, and everything around us that we see did not exist. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brought, created, and brought it into existence, you know, uh, by His kudra, by His ability, Subhanahu wa Taala. So once that was all around us, would never existed. And he brought it into existence and created and brought it into existence. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, وَمِنْهَا خَلْقِ يَتَجَدَّدْ مِثْلُ النَّبَاتِ وَالْمَوَالِيدِ وَأَشْيَاءَ مَا كَانَتْ مَوْجُودَ ثُمَّ وَجَدَتْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْدُرُونَ إِلَيْهَا مَنِ الَّذِي يَخْلُقُهَا وَاللَّهُ سُبْعَانُ وَتَعَالَى هَلْ تَخْلُقُ نَفْسُهَا هَلْ أَحَدْ مِنَ الْبَشَرْ خَلَقَهَا so the Sheikh then continues and he says that um, so from you know from the creation um, is what we see from you know the vegetation and things like that that you know they, they, they were created by Allah initially but you know they obviously come and go they come it's a cycle you know of crops and all this and and, and they're present. And, and and the Sheikh says and that, and then they were there and they were placed and then you see and they come and you know they're in this life cycle and you are watching and you see this with your own eyes. Then the Sheikh says and who created it? It is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then the, then this question then there's a question comes and says, did anybody else create it? Uh, uh, or uh, uh, did it create itself? Did it create itself out of nothing? Is there anybody from humankind? That created it. The answer is nobody can claim that they did or have done, and they're not. It's not possible for them to even claim it in the first place because they can't create anything. We can't create anything out of thin air. We we can't do that. Not possible. <clears throat> False. <clears throat> then the Sheikh uh, says he quotes uh, ayah, ayah of the Quran says Qala Taala Am khuliku min ghairi shayin am humul khaliqun أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بَلْ لَا يُقِنُونَ هذه الأشياء ما أوجدت نفسها أو أوجدها, أوجدها غيرها من المخلوقات أبدا <تصفيق> ولن يخلق أحد شجرة أو بعودة أو ذبابا 
ان الذين تدعون من دون الله لن يخلقوا ذبابا ولو اجتمعوا له so um there's no the ayah that's quoted so let's go through that to help us understand um what the sheikh is saying so the first ayah is from that's mentioned just now is from surah tur so let's go to tur verse there's two verses so let's read them all were they created by nothing or were they themselves the creators or did they create the heavens and the earth nay but they have no firm belief All right so that's from surah surah at-tur let's have a look at the last time surah al-hajj here surah al-hajj verse 73 we'll read the whole ayah inshallah o mankind a similitude has been coined so listen to it carefully verily those on whom you call besides allah cannot create even a fly even though they combine together for the purpose and if the fly snatched away a thing from them they would have no power to release it from the fly so weak are both the seeker and the sought so that's very clear as well that you know even if it was a fly or a mosquito the sheikh mentions here obviously this is the ayah that we mentioned but he mentions even before that that you know we, it's not possible to even create nobody can create a tree from nothing they can't just create a tree that is there they're not possible they can't do that and even Uh, just to strike the example even more clearly they can't even create a mosquito which is tiny or a fly or even a fly so such little things they can't create you know so then the ayah corroborates what, what the sheikh was saying what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so let's continue so the sheikh says fahad al khalq yadullu ala al khaliq subhanahu wa ta'ala wa li hadha lamma qila li arabi ala al badiha bima arafta rabb bima arafta rabbak qala al البعرة تدل على البعير والأثر يدل على المسير ألا يدل ألا يدل هذا الكون على اللطيف الخبير. so then the sheikh mentions a different example to us which is a famous uh, uh, example and the sheikh says he continues he says he starts the paragraph and he says this uh, creation it, it shows us it, it points us towards and it sends us towards that, that there's a creator it points us towards that there's a creator It demonstrates to us that there's a creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reason uh, when it, it was said to the, uh, the, bed, the Bedouin, the Arab Bedouin, uh, upon, upon his natural disposition. Uh, and with, so it was asked, with what do you know, or with what do you know your Lord, or how do you know your Lord exists? He said, the manure the manure or the droppings point towards animals or the camels obviously we're talking about the desert the camels so that their droppings point towards the animals the, the, the camels the footsteps or the tracks that are left on the ground point towards uh people or or, or something that walked that people walked on it for example so doesn't this demonstrate to us that the universe that's around us is uh, 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 or doesn't it demonstrate to us that it's from al-latif al-khabir meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who created who's the lord of everything who created all of this so then the sheikh continues and goes on to the next paragraph he says ila ra'ayta athra qadam ala al-ard amma yaduluka hadha ala anna ahadan masha ala hadhi al-ard ila ra'ayta ba'ra al-ba'ir ala yaduluka هذا uh, على أن هذه الأرض فيها إبل أو مر عليها بعير البئرة تدل على بعير البئرة تدل على البعير والأثر يدل على المسير so the sheikh mentions here what, what we just mentioned already uh, so he just striking the example just to remind us so if we see for example if we see uh, footsteps on the tracks right um, uh, on the ground on the, on the earth doesn't that shows that somebody walked upon uh, upon it did somebody walk upon this earth if we saw the manure the droppings of of uh, of camels or animals doesn't that demonstrate to us that that these animals walked upon this land and they passed by it and so the sheikh says this manure and the droppings that we see demonstrate to us that there's animals that were there and likewise the footsteps and the tracks that we see 
the footsteps, for example, on the uh, on on the earth that we see, demonstrate to us that somebody walked upon upon the you know upon the earth. It demonstrates to us. So therefore, when you look at the bigger picture, we know that Allah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the Lord of everything. He created everything that surrounds us. It points, and it, you know. So um, this is what the Sheikh is saying. Um, and then the Sheikh says, "Qawluhu wa min ayatihi al-layl wa nahar wa shams wa al-qamar." So the Sheikh says, and he said, and the original author said, and from his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, and and the signs are upon two categories. So the signs are from two different categories. The first category, al qismul awwal ayat ayatu kauni ayatun kauniyatun kauniyatun tushahad tushahad. مثل السماوات والأرض والنجوم والشمس والقمر والجبال والشجر والبحار سميت آيات لأن لأن بها دلالات على خالق على خالقها سبحانه وتعالى ولهذا يقول أبو العتاية عتاية عتاهية there's some poetry I'll read that in a minute so the sheikh says first of all he says the first category right of of the signs are the Signs of the that around us, the in the universe, the earth, the universe around us, that we can see, that we see, we feel, we can see it, we can sense it. Yeah, it's there, uh, like the 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 sky, like the earth, like the stars, like the sun, like the moon, like the mountains, like the trees, like the seas. These are named signs because by it. Um, it, it demonstrates that that it has a creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is a creator of, of these things. It just come out of nowhere. And so the Sheikh says, uh, uh, and that's why uh, one of the poets, Abu Abu Atahia, um, <clears throat> said uh, he said these three lines of, of poetry. Um, and if we read them, uh, we'll see why that is relevant to us. So <clears throat> says. فيا عجبا كيف يؤسى الإله أم كيف يجحد الجاهد وفي كل شيء له آية تدن ألا أنه واحد ولله في كل تحريكة وتسكينة في الورى شاهد. so basically what's being said here is that what what the sheikh just said in the first paragraph above it the paragraph above it that you know how can you um, turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that turn away from believing and uh, affirming that there's a that there's a Lord that created everything that's around you, right? And turn away from it. How can you? It's amazing. So he's saying the first line, it's amazing how one can turn away from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deity that created everything that around you. He says and says in everything there is a sign. That in the second line of the poetry, in everything there's a sign that demonstrates and points towards Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only. And then in the last line of this poetry here, the third line, it says, And for Allah, it belongs to Allah, all that which moves and that which stays still, yeah, uh, and in it is a sign. So it's clear. It's it's just the Sheikh quotes that from his original text here, what we read anyway. So it's just showing that um, uh, that the, the this poet has showed the amazement that somebody can just turn their backs and turn away, even though they know it deep down, but they turn away. As you see, atheists turn away uh, and make some absurd argument that does not make sense, um, and turn away from everything that's around them, and that not to believe that there is no creator. Who created everything that's around us? So let's continue. So then the Shaykh says, "فكيف يجحد أحد أحد الله جل وعلا ويقول ليس هناك رب لهذا الكون كله وهذه المخلوقات وجدت من غير خالق وإن وجدت بخالق فمن هو هذا الخالق غير الله جل وعلا بي بين لي لا تجد خالق غير الله سبحانه وتعالى أم جعلوا لله شركاء خلقوا كخلقه." فَتَشَابَهَ الْخَلْقُ عَلَيْهِمْ قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَارُ <clears throat> So then uh, the Sheikh mentions here that so how can you, you know, uh, disavow and deny 
uh, how could anybody deny and disavow that Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wa ala, and say, oh, uh, there isn't a Lord uh, that created all of this, there, a Lord doesn't exist. Uh, the creation, all of this creation just came uh, came about without a Lord. How can they say that? How how could he say that? Uh, and and if and then and if a Lord was found or a creator was found, uh, uh, me, uh, and who is it other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? It's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Jalla uh, Allahu Jalla Jalalu, who who um, um, who created all of this. And if you ask ask them, they will not be able to bring evidence. You know, if it was if they were claimed somebody else. There's no evidence, they don't have any firm evidence. And then there's an ayah uh, mentioned here from Surah Al-Ra'd and we will go through that now. Uh, Surah Al-Ra'd verse 16 and let's read the whole ayah inshallah. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth? Say, it is Allah. Say, have you then taken for worship awliya, protectors, etc. other than him, such as have no power, either for benefit or for harm to themselves? Say, is the blind equal to the one who sees, or darkness equal to light, or do they assign to Allah partners who created the like of His creation, so that the creation which they made and His creation seemed alike to them? Say, Allah is the Creator of all things; He is the one, the irresistible. So that's clear to us there. So then, that's the first category, right? And let's just finish this off now. We nearly finished, so we may as well finish the lesson, inshallah, up until uh, we get just uh, we got a couple of pages to go, I believe. So, um, <clears throat> says the second category, the Shaykh says, Al-Ayat al-Qur'aniyya alati tutla min al-wahi al-munazila lal-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Adi kulluha adilla ala wujud al-Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala kamalihi wa sifatihi wa asma'ihi wa ala annahu mustahiqun lilibadati wahda wa la sharika la kulluha tadullu ala dhalik al-Ayat al-Qawniyya wa al-Ayat al-Qur'aniyya. So the second um, uh, type of sign, or the second or category of signs. So the first is from what we see, what we can see, what we feel, you know, the universe. Uh, and then uh, the second sign is that which comes from the signs that come from the Quran that are, uh, that are being revealed to us uh, by way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That all of these, all of that within the Quran is a sign, you know, from the Hadith and the Quran itself. Th this is a sign and they call Ayat al quraniya from the Quran. And so this points us and also shows us that... Um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his completeness, uh, you know, in his attributes and his names, and that he is deserved of all worship with no, with a, without associating partners with him. Um, and that all of that uh, from the universe that we can see around us and we can feel and touch and see and etc. Uh, and from the uh, signs of the, of the Quran, from the Quran themselves, um, are point towards this. Uh, then the Shaykh continues, he says, Al Ayat al Qawniya, Tadulu Allah Khalika wa Mawjudha wa Mudabirha, Wal Ayat al Qurani, Fiya al Amr bi Ibadat al Lai wa Fiya Taqreer, Tawheed al Rububiya, Wal Istidlal bi Ala Tawheed al Uluhiya, Wal Amr bi Ibadat al Lai Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Kulu al Quran, Yaduru Allah Had al Ma'na, Wa Unzila min Ajdi Had al Ma'na. So then the Shaykh says, So from the first category of signs, the signs of the Qawniya, the universe and around the, the, the world, the, the, what we can see, etc., then that point, that, that, that's shows that's evidence that there's a creator that brought it into existence and takes care of it and deals with the affairs of the universe. And the ayat that are in the Quran, the signs from the Quran, for in the, that, that's to do with the affair of worshipping Allah alone and not seeing partners with him. And in it is, uh, you know, affirmation of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the tawheed of rububiyah, lordship, the tawheed of lordship and evidences uh, that point um, that that uh, demonstrate uh, the tawheed of aluhiya Lord uh, uh, worship, as in worshiping Allah alone, and that he did, and singling Allah out in all forms of worship and directing all worship to Allah and the affair of worship generally Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So it says all of the Quran uh, revolves around uh, this meaning, and that it was revealed and sent down uh, for the reason of this meaning. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْقَمَرِ هَذِهِ مِنْ أَعْذَمْ آيَاتِهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَلَىٰ اللَّيْلَ الْمُظْلِمِ أَلَذِي يُغَدِّي هَذَا الْكَوْنِ وَالنَّهَارِ الْمُضِيءِ أَلَذِي يُضِيءَ هَذَا الْكَوْنِ فَيَنْتَشِرُ النَّاسُ لِأَشْغَالِهِمْ قال تعالى قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ 
يأتيكم بدياء أفلا تسمعون قل أرأيتم إن جعل الله عليكم النهار سرمدا إلى يوم القيامة من إله غير الله يأتيكم بليل تسكنون فيه أفلا تبصرون ومن رحمته جعل لكم الليل والنهار لتسكنوا فيه ولتبتغوا من فضه ولعلكم تشكرون So that's a long ayah but we'll see we'll understand that in a minute inshallah So then the Sheikh says that and from the uh, signs that we have that support, that demonstrate that that is the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the night and the day the sun and the moon uh, and these are from the greatest of the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us um the 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 dark the night that's dark the darkness of the night that covers you know the the skies that uh, all around us makes everything dark and the day that and that lights you know everything that's around us and gives light and so we can see for example and that people are able to go about their daily lives and without the light they wouldn't be able to um and then the uh, the this long ayah is quoted here so we'll go there's the suratul qasas let's go to suratul qasas this will help us understand what has been said three ayahs here say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell me if allah made night continuous for you till the day of resurrection who is an ilah a god besides allah who could bring you light will you not then hear say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell me if allah made day continuous for you till the day of resurrection who is an ilah a god besides allah who could bring you night wherein you could rest will you not then see it is out of his mercy that he has put for you night and day that you may rest therein i.e. during the night and that you may seek of his bounty i.e. during the day and in order that you may be grateful so that's very clear to us there from what the sheikh said and then what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said there the translation that we've read from the three ay- uh, three ayahs uh, verses from surah al-qasas verse 71 to 73 so the sheikh continues and says hada min a'dham ayat allah hada al-layl wa hada an-nahar لا الوقت كله ليل ولا الوقت كله نهار لأنه لو كان كذلك أتعتلت مصالح الإباد والتعب. so um, the sheikh says here that these are from the major signs, you know, the magnificent signs that Allah, from the magnificent signs of Allah, the night and the day, and there isn't a time all of it. That, so there isn't the the time isn't always, for example, night, and the time isn't always Uh, um, day because if it was like that then it would render the uh, the benefits and uh, uh, the general benefits that we would get from the night and the day it would render them useless we wouldn't be able to if you're just all day all long it just wouldn't work uh, and if it was night as you can understand yourselves if it was night all the time it just wouldn't work it just wouldn't be able to do anything it would everything would just be rendered useless So the Sheikh says, "Jaal Allahu lahum al-layl wal-nahar yataqaban, thumma in al-layl wal-nahar muntadiman, la yatakhlaf la yatakhlafu wahid min huma, wa la yatagir ala niza ala niza min wahid min ma yadulu ala hikmat al-hakim Subhanahu wa Taala, af'al al-ibad wa sinatihim taqrub wa taqtalif mahma kanat tatagtal, wa amma makhlukat." وأما وأما مخلوقات الله عز وجل فإنها لا تخرب إلا في وقت وقت يأذن الله فيه بخرابها. So then the Sheikh says that Allah made um, the night and the day um, you know um, follow each other. So the day will come, then the night comes, then the day comes, and the night comes as we live we we live in this world we know. And so the Sheikh says then indeed the, the night and the day uh, they are in an organized manner they one follows the other and one doesn't delay upon the other they one comes straight after the other when the time is there it comes the night and the day you know right uh, and and the sheikh says this doesn't change and it's upon um uh, nizam it's upon uh, uh, an organized way right um uh, and 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 this shows us uh, and shows us the the uh, wisdom of al hakim ai allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wisdom of allah and so for example the actions of the servants and what they do what they uh, what they do what they create it, it becomes corrupted right it becomes corrupted and useless as for 
uh, Allah's creation, Azawajal, indeed it does not corrupt, it does not become corrupted, except in a time that Allah allows it to be corrupted. Right? So you can understand the distinction that, that, that how the creation itself, Unsan, are we, when we create stuff, we make things, you know, you can't, you make it and all of a sudden there's a fault. But um, and it was never had that issue, have we, with the day of the night? Every time it's day, we know night's coming and we wake up and well, if you do wake up and you're blessed enough to wake up, then you wake up and it's uh, morning time, it's daylight. It, we, it's, it's never stopped, has it? Where it's just been night 24-7, you know? So um, uh, so we can take that uh, example. It's uh, easy to understand, alhamdulillah. So we'll just, we'll just finish here. We've just got the last two paragraphs right here. So please stay with me. فَاللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ مُسْتَمِرَانِ لَمْ يَتَعَدَّلْ أَحَدْ مِنْهُمَا بين بَيْنَمَا صِنَاعَةُ الْخَلْقِ تَتَعَدَّلْ وَتَخْرُبَ وَتَفْنَى وَإِنْ كَانَتْ قَوِيَةٌ أَوْ دَخْمَةٌ We've already, we've already just mentioned that already, so we won't need to translate that. كَمْ تُشَاهِدُونَ مِنَ سِيَارَاتَ الْمَرْمِيَّةِ وَطَائِرَاتِ وَالْبَوَاخِرِ مَا أَنَّهَا قَوِيَّةٌ وَمُؤْتَنَ بِهَا لَكِنَّهَا تَخْرُبْ الليل او تعتل النهار ان الصناعه قدير حكيم جل وعلا سن سن الله الذي اتقن كل شيء um, so um, we'll just finish there so the last paragraph as well is what we mentioned as well because uh, uh, i would have read this earlier on so that's why i've mentioned the example from the sheikh um, uh, so we'll just stop here we'll continue uh, from here the, the last paragraph here if, just if you can see my cursor just moving here uh, it, the Sheikh just says, look, uh, that in terms of uh, Allah's creation, the night and the day, we don't see that stopping or just, uh, you know, having any problems. But with the creation from uh, what uh, human kind of made, like the cars and the planes, we see that they they, they, they become useless or they are false and things like that. And and then uh, the Sheikh um, uh, quotes this ayah. So for your homework, if you want to, so to speak, you can have a look at the translation of this Surah An-Naml, verse 88. Uh, so you can have a look at that for yourselves uh, and uh, have a look at the translation so you understand what's being said here and we'll continue inshallah uh, from next week we've gone over a little bit but I wanted to get the whole lesson completed so Jazakallah for staying with me and inshallah we will meet again next week Subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ilan wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayka Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh